Lord, I'm healed. That's right. Yes. And you look at me like, boy, that coughing you doing, you better go. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Right. And if you can't get an agreement with my healing, then you need to get out. Right. Amen. Amen. I'm not broke. I'm blessed. Yeah. I'm the lender and not the bar. Yeah. Yeah. I'm the head. Now let me pause right there because you can't be the lender and you stingy. Right. Yes. There we go. Come on. No, no, I'm going to tell you seriously because you got to watch what you're saying. I, I start confessing, you know, I'm the lender and not the bar. And my wife and I start confessing, God, thank you that you allow us to be able to lend money to folk. And folks start calling. They, call. like, oh, they want to ask you in the bar, you know, $25 for gas. You know what I mean? They're like, oh, no, man, I'm just bless you with that. That's fine. You know, they, they need big money. <laughs> uh, can, I, can I owe $1,700 until? <laughs> Excuse me? You know, and you need to buy when? The next three hours. Why do you want me to lend you and inconvenience my day? Ain't you a blessing? <laughs> <laughs> Glory to God. No, but you got to be careful. No sense because I, be, I, I said it so much yeah. that God has now positioned me to be able to help people. Yeah. And now I got to walk that thing out. Yes. Uh -huh. you discern me. Don't nobody ask the bar, nobody up the church that answers no. I got to walk <laughs> that. Th Pastor, remember when you had said that you were going to no, walk that thing not. out? Uh, you still walking? <laughs> no, not, not right now. <laughs> I'm taking a break. <laughs> Waiting for a few people to pay me back. Bless their heart. But you will have whatever you say. So you got to say it. But saying it is not enough. Because a lot of folk, we say it. We, we, Man, you know in church, if we're not careful, we get so locked into these regimens and these systems of just, you know, of, of church talk. Right. There you go. Church yeah. yeah, choice jargon. Yeah, choice jargon. You know, we get locked into that, you know. Yeah, cliche. And, yeah, and, and, and it becomes cliche. Yeah. And we just say it because it sounds good and it feels good in that moment. Yeah. Come on. They say, wow, come on, yeah. how do you, come on, you need to say it. I'm a millionaire. I'm a millionaire. You happy in the moment. <laughs> you don't believe that thing. Oh, wow, it's funny. You don't believe it? No, many people don't believe it. We just go through the motion of naming it and claiming it. Come on, y'all know where I'm going. Blab it and grab it. Call it and haul it. We got, and you know, we rhyme with it and everything. You know, I ain't broke. God destroyed the yoke. Like, okay, so you got bars today, all right? You're in church rapping. <laughs> and that's it, but you don't see any results of your confession because you don't believe it. Yeah. Uh, See, my lack of results, God, why you got me stuck here? My lack of results in my life could really be an indication that I'm not believing the right way. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Or that I'm basing my belief, get this, on a sign. Because Jesus talked to a group of folk, Pastor Burrell, he said, you know, see, y'all missing it. Because except you see signs and wonders, yeah, you ain't going to believe. Right. Yeah, yeah. You're still looking for signs. Come on. The word of God is all the sign that I need. Right. Did y'all hear what I said? Right. The word of God and what he has put in there as his promises to my life, that's, that's all the assurance that I need. I don't need a sign. Right. God gave us his word so that we don't have to look for signs. Did y'all hear what I said? God gave us his word so that we don't have to look for signs. Gideon needed a sign. He didn't have a word to stand on. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he, he didn't have a word to stand on. He didn't have anything to assure him that God was with him. And so he needed a sign. So he says, God, before I go into this battle, I, you know, I think I know that I think that I know that you've said something, but I need some assurance. Yeah. So if you're really with me, God, here's what I need you to do. Let the fleece be wet and let the ground be dry. So. And God did it. Uh -huh. Unfortunately, I wasn't enough for him. He said, all right, God, now if you could just bear with me a little bit because I'm struggling. Because you Listen, because do you know what you're saying? You're telling me to take 300 men yeah. and go to war with thousands. Yeah. <laughs> I need a sign yeah. that, that this is in fact you. Yeah. Yeah. So now I need you to let the fleece be dry uh -huh. and let the ground be wet. Mm -hmm. And God did it. And that was the sign that he needed in order to move forward in confidence and in assurance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yes, yes, but yes. now we don't need God to do tricks. Yeah. Mm. Now we have the word of God to stand on. And God is saying that I want you to get to a place in your life where my word is enough. Yeah. 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 
when my word is enough. Somebody say, God, your word is enough. Your word is enough. Your, the promises that you have made available to me in your word, I'm going to stand on it. I'm going to say it. I'm going to believe it. So if you can believe it in your heart, you can receive it in your life. And then we dealt with the receiving part. Y'all need to hear this. That's not what God had me here. Because you need to hear this because you got to believe that you receive it. Now, receiving it says that I not only believe that God can, but I believe that he will do it for me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there are a lot of us who believe that God can do it in general. Yes. You know, I believe that God can bless me with a million dollars. Yeah. But do you believe that he will? Yeah. See, now that's receiving it. Receiving it is, is, is now making that thing real in your life. God, I'm claiming it as already done. Yes. yes. So say it, believe it, receive it, and then act on it. Then we move here now into the prayer of consecration, which is where we were on Tuesday yeah. night. Yeah. My God. Yeah. Woo. The prayer of consecration yes. and dedication. dedication. This is the prayer that says... Not my will, yes. but thy will be done. Let's look at what the prayer of consecration looks like in Luke chapter 22. Luke chapter 22, verse 39. Look at this. Then accompanied by the disciples, Jesus left the upstairs room and went, as usual, to the Mount of Olives. Uh -huh. There he told them, <coughs> this is good right here, pray that what? You will not give to temptation. Pray that you will not give into temptation. Pause there. And something that the Holy Spirit spoke to me last night, uh, Mother Burrell, is that consecration will help you to overcome temptation. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Yeah. Let's go we'll talk to this side. All right. Let's talk to this side. The worship ministry is over here. They need to hear this. Consecration right. will help you to not give into temptation. Can I talk to the middle section real quick? Yeah, yeah. We got some visitors here, but that's all right. I love you. Consecration. Yes, yes. Will help you to overcome temptation. Yes, yes. So he tells them, pray. Yeah. Somebody say consecrate. Consecrate. So that you will not give in to temptation, right? Mm -hmm. Verse 41. Keep going. Did I get 41? He walked away about a stone's throw. And he knelt down and prayed. Uh huh. Here it is. Somebody said a prayer of consecration. Prayer he says, Father, if you are willing, please take this cup of suffering away from me. Yet, read this last part with me. I want your will to be done, not mine. That's the prayer of consecration. It says, Not my will. But thy will be done. I got to pick up where I left off so y'all have to share notes with your neighbor. Consecration involves complete voluntary surrender to the Lord. Consecration involves complete voluntary surrender to the Lord. When we consecrate something, we set it apart for God's use. When we consecrate something, we set it apart for God's use. Now, it's important that we understand consecration because many people confuse cons consecration with fasting. And consecration and fasting are not the same thing. Fasting is a part of consecration, but it in and of itself is not consecration. Consecration involves more than just turning your plate over for three days. Because the enemy can wait three days to get you. Right. Y'all not hearing me. That's good. <laughs> yeah. The enemy can wait three. Oh, listen, he waited 40 days for Jesus in the yeah, wilderness. Yes, he did. After that. He said, no, go on in the mountain. <laughs> go on, do your thing. Go on to the revival. Go, I mean, go to that revival and be faithful every night and pray and speak in tongues and roll wow. over the floor. And, and you go do all that stuff that y'all be doing. I'll be waiting for you. I'll, I'll be waiting for you. I know. Hope get this. I know I can't beat you while you're on your spiritual high. Right, mm -hmm. right. That's right. So I'm gonna wait for that thing to kind of mellow off a little That's bit. Right. Yeah. Oh, don't act like you ain't never been high before. Right. I don't know what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. I, I ain't never been high, but we got some folk in here. You, no, you, you know, you, 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 you. Once upon a time, come on. Just, just keep looking for it. Nobody ain't nothing talking about you. But, but, but you, you know, you know what it is when you're coming off of that high. And when you come off that high, that's when you become more vulnerable and susceptible. Yes. Oh, y'all hear what I'm saying? Yes. So Satan says, go on, 
Go on and, and pray for 40 days. Yeah, yeah. Go on and fast. Go ahead. Go ahead and do that. You got to pass through this wilderness at some point. Right. And when you come, are y'all hearing me? That's why That's why you can't start and stop with three days, you know. Oh, child, I'm on consecration this week. That's what we say in church. I'm on consecration this week. Child, pray for me. I'm going three days. <laughs> you feel like you're doing something. Ooh, I'm excited. Three-day consecration. Right? And you feel good for three days, and when you come up that consecration, and you realize that not much in the world around you has changed, That's right. and the enemy comes now and hits you with your greatest temptation. Yes. Understand, he had to wait for Jesus to be hungry in order to tempt him. Yes. That's right. That's right. Ooh, that's good. And if Jesus had just been hungry for three days, it wouldn't have bothered him none. Uh, see, because the way our bodies are set up, our bodies are not designed to go 40 days without food and water. That's right. You know, God is not calling us to try to be super spiritual and do these things. Amen. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you? Yeah. So you ain't got to try to be a wonder. Ooh, child, I'm going to be like Jesus. All right, what? <laughs> you ain't going to raise in four days, I can tell you that much. You know? <laughs> Glory to God. But he waits until Jesus is completely vulnerable. Completely vulnerable. Void of natural strength. Mm -hmm. yeah. Totally weak. Yes. And then he says, if you really are the son of God, command these stones to be bread. Right? And the only defense, because he just came out of consecration. Yes. But he's right. been consecrating. Yes. And the only the only weapon that he had to use against the devil in his weakest moment was the word yeah. of yeah. God. Yes, sir. Yeah. That was it. Yes. The only weapon, the only weapon that he had to use that was going to be most effective in that moment. He didn't get into no arguments with him. He did not. He just spoke. The, the word says, man shall not live by bread alone, yeah. but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Right? And so he began to yeah. combat the enemy yes. with the word of God. Yes. Now I'm about to mess some of y'all church theology up because I want to tell you the only offensive weapon that the believer has is the word of God. I don't care what you heard, where you heard it, what YouTube clip you heard it on. I'm here to tell you that we don't fight. Our praise is not about fighting the devil. No, that's right. I need to get a witness up in here. Amen. Our praise is not God never told us or showed us where praise is a weapon. That's right. Amen. Amen, Pastor. Yeah, you can't find it. You're not going to find it. And I know you're not going to find it because I look for it. And I look for it because, you know, I've heard it so much. And at one point, I subscribed to it. And I was wondering why I was shouting and dancing but still wasn't defeating. Yeah. Right, right. Never use the word. I, I just left church tired. Yeah. But I never applied the word to my situation. Yeah. And some of you are putting the praise where you need to be applying the word. Wow. Amen. See, my praise needs to be the result of my, uh, 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 it needs to be my, my celebration and my response yeah. Yeah. to the word. Yeah. Come on. My praise is my response to the word. Yeah. My praise is, is, is the thing that says, God, now, God, I believe what you said, so now I'm walking in faith yeah. and I praise yeah. you for the outcome. Yeah. But the praise is. Itself, to see the focus of my praise has to be glorifying God, not defeating the devil. Yeah. 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 This is why praise is so ineffective for so many people yeah. because you have made your praise about what the devil is doing. Right. You have made your praise about how the devil is on your back. Rather than making God the center of your praise and saying, God, no matter what he's doing, I praise you for who you are. I thank you for who you are. And I know that in you I have victory. I know that in you I'm made strong. I know that in you your promises are yea and amen. So I praise you for being God. I praise you for being my strength. I praise you for being the source of my strength and the strength of my life. Do you understand what I'm saying? And then you defeat the devil with the word. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Me and my family, we yeah. have blessed him to feel. Come on. The yeah. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Now unto him who's able to do exceeding abundantly. Above all that I do want to defeat the devil with the word. Yeah, yeah. 
what consecration is going to help you to do yes. is keep the word of God at the forefront of your mind. Yeah, so when troubles and trials happen in your life, come on, your natural response will no longer be to cry and the fuss and the cuss, but your natural response yeah. will be the word of God. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. See, they look at folk like that as being deep right. or being super spiritual. Yeah. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But if you really want... <sighs> If you really want to get to a certain place in God, yes. you've got to understand that consecration is us setting ourselves apart for God's use. Yes. 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 So when we consecrate our lives, we turn our backs on fleshly desires, worldly values, carnal thinking, undisciplined living, bad habits, wow. and on everything else that does not agree with God's word. Consecration is me turning away from everything that yes, is against Lord. what God said. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. And therefore, consecration it's not an act. Come on. It's a lifestyle. Yes. Yes. Ooh. Consecration is not something that we do on Tuesdays and Fridays. Y'all not hearing me? It's a lifestyle. Consecration is not something that you plan for your whole church for 21 days. And then after that, everybody just resorts back to their old way of doing things. Come on, because everybody that you know was in the Daniel fast at the beginning of the year. And we'd be excited about it. 21 days. That's it. 365 days in a year. 21 days. That's, the, that's, the, that's, that's, that's all there is to your consecration. Because we've not been taught that consecration and fasting are not the same thing. And so I'm trying to tell you that you don't just need to fast. And you don't just need to pray. You need to consecrate. You need to make yourself available for God's use. Yes. So let me go into this real quick. <sighs> Glory to God. I got stuck again. Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory to God. Thank you, Candace. It's okay. Thank you, Candace. Hallelujah. Yeah. She's okay. Tony mad at me because I got stuck. <laughs> Hallelujah. I, I want to look at real quick. I, I want to. Yeah. I, I want to show you something in in the Word of God. Let's look at. Let's look at John uh -huh. seventeen. Let's look at John 17 and 4. Now, this is, this, is just, this is Jesus talking, and he's talking to his father. He says, oh yeah. I brought glory to you here on earth by doing what? Uh -huh. Hold on. So consecration positions us to complete the work. Yes. See, when I'm in consecration mode, I'm focused on my assignment. Yes, right. When I'm not in consecration, I'm focused on my worldly, earthly desires. That's right. But when I'm in consecration, I'm focused on my assignment. Mm -hmm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So he says, I brought glory to you here on earth by completing the work that you gave to me, uh, yes. that you gave me to do. Now drop down, drop down to verse, uh, what, verse 14. He says... Now, this is him talking about his disciples and those who've been called to him. He says, I have given them your word, and the world hates them because they do not belong to the world, just as I do not belong to the world. Uh huh. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. Y'all better, I'm about to drop something on you real quick. <laughs> just to hold, hold your horses. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but to keep them safe from the evil one. Read. Yes. Uh huh. They do not belong to this world any more than I do. Yeah, huh? Make them holy by your truth and teach them your word, which is truth. So I say consecration. Consecration. Just as you sent me where? Into the world. Into the world. Where am I sending them? Into the world. Into the world. Uh-huh. Boy, folks don't like when you start talking like that, but it's all right. And I give myself as a holy sacrifice, consecrated, for them so they can be made holy by your truth. Yeah. Now, I want you to get something here. I want you to get something. Yes. <sighs> Glory to God. I want you to get that Jesus was not, though he, was, he lived a consecrated life, Jesus was not a recluse or a fanatical holy man practicing self-denial. Right. Get this. He did not physically cut himself off from society. <laughs> But he was inwardly disconnected all the time. Mm. I'm going to say that again. Well, he did not good. physically cut himself off yeah. from society. But he was inwardly 
disconnected all the time. Yes. He was not aloof, but he did live in another world. In fact, he was so much in the common everyday world that the religious people of his day accused him of being a glutton and a drunkard. Mm -hmm. uh, are y'all hearing what I'm saying? But God, uh, 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 I, he, he, he never allowed anything, Jesus that is, to interfere with his consecration. Yes. So it is not genuine consecration to think that we can refuse to be used of God now in order to store up our spiritual power for later use. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. The Spirit of God has set, has set so many people free from their sin, yet they are experiencing no fullness in their lives and no true sense of freedom because they are not consecrated. Mm -hmm. hmm. You know, we say that we are in the world but not of the world. Mm -hmm. that's, where that, that's where that whole right. idea is taken from right here in John uh, 17. That we're in the world and not of the world, and simply what that mean, means is yeah. to be separated internally, not externally. Right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? <laughs> mm -hmm. We're still called to operate in the world. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But in doing so, we must make sure that we are disconnected internally, uh -huh. even though we are connected externally. Are you hearing me? Yes. See, when you are consecrated, you can go into certain environments yes. where you have to go. Sometimes you got to go for work and you know what I'm saying? There's some things you have to do. That's right. Amen. So some, some, some places you have to be. And all those places, they ain't speaking in tongues. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> Glory to God. Some of them are speaking the most profane language you ever heard in your life. My God. All those places, they ain't playing James. Y'all quiet still. You going to some places? I was in. Where did I go yesterday? I went. I went to some. Uh, I did something. I was falling asleep behind the wheel, so I, I got off the freeway and and, and went to do some shopping. I said, "This will wake me up." And uh, I can't remember where I went, but where I went in the store, and uh, I was looking around doing something, and I'm telling you. Louder than you could hear yourself think. They start playing some. I think it would sound like it was Cardi B, and and, I, and it was the explicit uncut version. I say in the store, huh? All these children, bless your heart. And I mean, they turned it all the way up, right? Listen, you can't control environments. No, you can't. Y'all not hearing me? You can't control environments, and you can't stay home for the rest of your life, right? So what we as believers have to do, and this is what consecration will teach us, it will teach you how to operate in the world. Uh, we made the world to, 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 to appear to be such a scary place that people are trying to figure out how can they not exist in the world. You can't. In fact, not only can you not exist in the world, Jesus says, I'm sending them into the world. Amen. But I put something so great inside of them that I know that you're going to protect them from the evil one that's in the world. But let me help you because now here's the other side of it is that you can't be effective in the world if the world still has an impact on you. Right. Wow. Exactly. Yeah. So consecration. Man. See, I go to a place that I ain't got to worry about somebody, you know, passing me a joint. I'm, I'm good. I'm, I'm not worried about that at all. You know, sometimes you go and you do weddings or whatever, have family members get married, and you know, and, and, and they may not know Jesus the way I do. <laughs> you know, we call them CME Christians. They go to church on Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. Right? And so that may be the extent, you know, really what they do. And they profess to be believers, but you know, they, they turn, they're part of the turn up crew. You know? And you sitting there and I'm telling you and they dancing and just doing, and the and the music's going, you know, you ain't got to sit there and turn your face up. Right. Just sit there. No, you, you ain't got to put out no no oil trying to lay hands on right. folk and this. You ain't got to do all that. You don't have to you don't have to, watch this. You don't have to show how saved you are. Right. Oh, glory to God. See, because you're gonna turn off more people trying to show how right. super spiritual yeah. you are Woo. than you will just all right. Y'all I, 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 I don't need to be playing this stuff. But you know, you always have an option to get up right, yeah. and to leave. Yeah. Yes. All right. 
Because, because the main thing is, internally, it has no effect on me. There you yes. go. That part. See, yeah. if you're uncomfortable... Uh, Come on. Go ahead and say it. Yeah. Yeah. If you get all fidgety, and if you feel something stirring up, then that could just be... You know, a sign that, that the old man ain't been buried. He ain't dead. He ain't dead. I'm just saying, you know, I don't ever feel like twerking nowhere. You know? The old man is dead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? But if you leave talking about, you know, child, who I had to get out of that. I was getting ready to turn up with it. Consecration. You need you need to consecrate yourself. Glory to God. Because internally you still got some things that you ain't that you ain't dealt with that still want you to gravitate. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Consecration will teach me how to operate in the world so that I can have an impact on the people in the world. Don't you know that folk can just observe how you are? That's right. That's right. They're watching. So consecration being dedicated to God's service. Right? That's consecration. Sanctification is being set apart from sin and being made holy. Right? So get this. Consecration is our part. Somebody say, that's my part. That's being my part. dedicated to God's service. That's consecration. However God wants to use it. But that's, that's my part. Sanctification is God's part. Being set apart from sin and being made holy. We're going to make ourselves holy. Are y'all understanding what I'm saying? Right. Sanctification is God part. God sanctifies, sanct sanctifies us. But we have the responsibility of consecrating ourselves. That's right. He sanctifies us. He doesn't consecrate us. Consecration is our part. It's what we do. It's intentionality. It's me saying, God, I make myself available to you to use me however you desire to use me. Yes. Consecration is saying, here am I, Lord, send me. Yes. Consecration is saying, God, here are my hands. Whatever you want them to do, I'm committing my hands to the work of the ministry. Are y'all hearing what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. See, you know, we don't have these type of committals anymore in church. And God is looking, and, and the reason why people are not as committed as they used to be is because they're not consecrated. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying to you today. When you get into a place of consecration, yeah. you make yourself available. Yeah, yeah, yeah. When you're in consecration, you're not irritated because you got to show up. Right. For first Friday. Yeah, right. Irritate. Because consecration says, I understand the importance of discipleship. I know that somebody's got to teach. I know that somebody has to be taught. I know somebody's got to serve. I know somebody's got to fix the, the food. I know that somebody consecration involves so much more than that, you know, there, there are the, the, the spiritual components, but you still gotta make yourself physically available. Right. Y'all don't believe me. Yeah. Romans chapter 12. I'm out of here with this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to do what? Offer your body, your body as a living sacrifice. Oh, y'all read that like y'all not excited about this scripture. This is the one we don't, we don't like this one. <laughs> oh, glory. Y'all say how y'all read? Offer your body as a living sacrifice. Let's, let's, try, let's try this again. I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to do what? To offer your bodies as uh -huh. living sacrifice. Now you're acting what? Holy and pleasing to God. And this is what? This is your true and proper worship. Go ahead. And what? Do not conform to the pattern of this world. Uh-huh. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then what's going to happen? Then you will be able to. Will. Put verse two up. Uh, put verse two up here. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. There it goes. Oh, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. If you don't get into consecration, then Romans twelve one and two will never become a reality in your life. You'll quote it over and over again, but you'll never follow through with it because only a person who has a, a, a consecrated life understands that God desires to transform me into a new person by changing the way that I think. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you today? Yes, yes. So get this. Give you these final points. When you're consecrated... Yeah. 
You can operate in the world unhinged and unbothered. Just, you don't, you don't, that's the one even bother me. Yeah. I'm concentrated. I know that God has called me to be in certain environments. I know I got to uh, talk to and deal with certain people. And so when I'm consecrated, I don't have to worry about it having an effect on me because the difference has already been made in my life. God has already transformed me into a new person by changing the way I think. That's why it's important that you go through the process of Romans 12 and 2 of being transformed into a new person by changing the way you think. Because if you don't change the way you think, you're always going to fall prey to the enemy's devices. Did y'all hear what I said? If you don't change the way you think, then you're going to always give in to temptation whenever it arises. If you don't change the way you think, then you will never really be able to live the kind of consecrated life that God wants us to live. Amen, somebody. Amen. Another point that you just I want to emphasize is that Jesus was connected to the world externally, but disconnected internally. You got you to keep that at the forefront of your mind that, that I may have to be connected to the world externally, but internally I need to disconnect and allow God to do the work inside of me. Are you hearing me? John 17 and 4, we discover that living a consecrated life brings glory to God. And we got to always remember we were made to bring glory to God. Amen. No, that's why he made us. Amen. That's why that what God cares more about than anything else is us bringing him glory. Amen. That's right. So how do I bring glory to God? It's simple. By operating according to his original design and intent in my life. Anything that is operating according to its original design and intent is bringing glory to its maker. Amen. Did y'all get what I said? Yes. Anything that's operating according to its original design and intent is bringing glory to its maker. That's right. I'm not telling the truth. That's why when you see folk designing something and they get it and they finally get that thing to work and that thing light up and they get so full of excitement. Oh, it works. Why? Because it works. Because it did what I designed for it to do. Yes. Woo! Yes. Trying to get y'all. Trying to get that. That's that's what it looks like. And God said, I made you in my image and in my likeness. And until I see what it is that I want to see from you, you're not bringing me glory. That's right. Until you are operating according to your or receive. Because again, in church, we just, and it's okay because we're going to learn some things this year. Because, you know, we, we look at glory as hallelujah. Right. All right? Thanks, Jesus. Lord, I give you glory. And he's like, okay, if you want to really give me glory. Uh-oh. Yeah. If you want to really give me glory, like if you really want me to get the glory, it don't, it don't start and stop with a praise. That's right. Me shouting glory to God is not really giving glory to God. Uh... I know, I, I, I know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got it because you know, because traditionally we just didn't know, and so and so now now we're learning that giving glory to God is more than just saying, "Ooh, Lord, I give you glory." That's not glory. That's not glory. He said, "No, you really want to give me glory? I need you to operate according to your original design and intent. Right, right. You want you really want to give me glory? I need you to get in the assignment that I've right. made specifically for you. If you want to give me glory, I need that gift that I gave you. I'm gonna need you to I'm gonna need you to move and operate in that gift and not yes. just sit on it. Y'all not yeah, hearing yeah, me? Yeah, yeah. You want to give me glory? I need you to do what I have called you to do. Yes. Nothing brings God glory more than a believer who is completely yielded and submitted to His will for their life. Amen. That's how you give God glory." Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you today? Yes. So, living a consecrated life helps us to give or bring glory to God. And then lastly, and I can't, I can't, I ain't even get halfway through. Hallelujah to God. This is how we struggle on Tuesday night, y'all. I'll be really struggling on Tuesdays. God give me so much. Real quick, because we got folk who take notes. I see you. What does the what does this process of consecration look like? I can't expound on all these. I'm gonna just give them to you. First, we need to remember God's grace in our lives. One of the most common commands in the Bible is to remember all that God has done for us. Remember all that God has done for us. Uh, a lot of times, a drift in our commitment to holiness is usually connected to a lack of awe and wonder at all that God has done for us. In other words, we get real comfortable and familiar and just kind of on a homey basis with God. Right. And whenever you get on that kind of personal basis with God, 
then 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 it, it, it reduces him to, you know, just you know, one of the fellas. And God said, No, 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 I'm not I'm not that. I'm sovereign. Yeah. I'm holy. Yeah. Right? And so remembering God's grace in our lives helps us to just stay in the posture of reflection. And just always keeping yeah. at the forefront of our mind how good and awesome and mighty and wonderful God is. We should never let uh, 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 that, that wonder of God be decreased in our lives. We should always stand in awe of him. Yeah. Yeah. That's why I have. That's why I struggle so much with people who come to church but can't worship. And I'm trying, I'm trying to figure out, well, you know, what are you here for? Yeah. But see, because you, when you, and this is what this is what you're talking about. When I think of the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me, again, things that have become uh, 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 cliche. Uh, a cliche. Yeah. Uh, and it's only become a cliche because it's lost its meaning. It no longer wow. has an impact on you Dang. because you've heard it so many times. Yeah. But to somebody, it is still a truth that when yeah. I think of the goodness of Jesus, yeah. when I consider His grace that He has shown to me yeah. and all that He's done for me, my soul cries out, Hallelujah! Wow. So when, as long as I'm reflecting on God's on God's grace in my life, I'll always be in a position to worship Him at any moment. <clears throat> Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Secondly, we need to remove our idols and distractions. Ooh. That's what I wanted to get to, but I can't. I just I couldn't. But we got to remove. We got to remove our idols and distractions. Yeah. Lord, I got a feeling we're gonna still be in this on Tuesday night. Yeah. We got to remove our idols and yeah. distractions. Yeah. I, I just I'm gonna keep on moving. Oh, glory to God. To consecrate ourselves before God, we need to recognize where we have adopted the idols of our surrounding culture and remove them from our lives. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm trying to tell yeah. you? Yeah. Oh, tell your neighbor, get rid of the distractions. Get rid of it. If you're going to be consecrated, you got to get rid of the distractions. Yeah. Amen. Thirdly, we need to repent of sinful attitudes and actions. Right. Woo. Wow. Consecration. We need to repent of sinful attitudes and actions. And then fourthly, we need to recommit our hearts to God. Mm -hmm. Remember, consecration is also about worship, right? And so when you look in the Bible and you see all these yeah. all these scriptures about about yeah. repentance and yeah. you know and all that stuff, you know, much of that is written to believers. Yes, yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Much of that is written to believers. Yes. We need to repent. Yeah. We need to die daily. We need yes. to be conscious and aware of our thoughts and our actions yes. daily. Somebody say daily. 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 Consecration, if it happens daily, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, it reduces the temptation in your life or the effects of it, rather. If you, if it, if you do it daily, then you grow to a point where you don't want to pop off and you don't get, you grow past the point of you wish somebody would. Mm. Uh, some of y'all were there this week. It's okay. You know, you had that moment at work or somewhere. You know, y'all, come on. You was already, you already had made up in your mind if they say anything to me. Why y'all quiet? Oh, y'all acting so safe there. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. But, but, but anybody ever been there before? Anybody ever been there before? You got, they got one more time. They got one more time. And then you already committed to it in your heart. In fact, you were standing close enough to them to hear it because you wanted to. <laughs> you, you, well, I, I wish. I, what? Because you, when you like that, they can't even say nothing nice to you. You know? Hey, I like your shoes. That's good. Come on, y'all know I'm telling the truth. I like you from the suburbs. You know good and you know good and well what I'm talking about. That 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 you grow see, but 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 when you're in the consecration, you're aware of all of that. Yes. And when you're in consecration, you no longer want to pop off, you want to pray for them. Yes, yes, yes. Are y'all hearing? There you go. See, because consecration, yeah. consecration by itself will help you to mature in God. Yes. And for us, it's just a maturity issue. Right, yes. That's all it is. Your extreme road rage ain't nothing but a sign of your 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 immaturity, and you need to consecrate more. You chasing folk, blowing your horn at them, and pointing your middle finger, and getting in, into into wars with folk with the windows up. You ain't even tough. Glory to God, because if they pull over and get out, you're gonna keep on driving. I ain't got time for that, but you got time to follow me. Hold on, let's finish this conversation. Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Oh, Lord of God, somebody failed that test this week. Here it is, I'm done. When you consecrate yourself to the Lord, you position yourself to receive supernaturally from Him. I end with this scripture, Joshua chapter 3, verse 5. Look at this. This is the thing that blessed me this morning. 5.30 this morning, I read this and was just excited. 
Joshua told the people what? Get in consecration. Consecrate yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do amazing things among you. I'm telling you, when you live in, when you live a consecrated life, you position yourself to receive supernaturally from the Lord. Are y'all hearing me? Yes, yes. When you live a consecrated this don't mean that you're gonna cross all your T's and dot all your I's, but what it does mean is you are, you have a heightened awareness. And a sensitivity to the Holy Spirit that is within. Yes. You're aware of your thoughts, your actions, your words. Come on. Consecration. You're spending time with the Lord daily. Yes. Throughout the day. Because it's a lifestyle. Are you understand what I'm saying? Yes. You know. Uh, but the Tony understands. He can't just call his wife in the morning at 8 a.m. And then don't talk to her no more until midnight. It's going to be a problem. She's like, at least check in with me. Text me and say something. Let me know you're good. That's what that's what that community communication is a part of a relationship. Yes. It's a vital part. I communicate with him throughout the day. Yes. Yeah. While I'm in traffic, I just I don't need to listen to the radio. Yeah. That's a good time right there for me to just be focused and reflect yeah. on the word of God. And even to be in prayer. Because let me debunk this myth real quick, LA. We ain't too busy. That's right. And ain't a single person in this room that's too busy. You spend on average at least an hour every day in some kind of traffic. You got time to pray. You got time to reflect. You got time to talk to the Lord. Yes. Hello. That's right. Consecration. Yes, yes. It's what God desires of us. I know I need I know I needed to, to give you more of this so that you know what it looks like. Yeah. Are you hearing what